Let's review a gaming notebook. OMG! No, no, no. ROG. ROG. This is the GL752VW ASUS ROG Gaming Notebook. I've got to give mad props on the box. That's that's the part that I get. I get to review the box. <laughs> uh, the box was printed with soy ink, which I feel like I have to give ASUS props for. So this is eminently recyclable. It's not really anything new that they're doing, but um, you know, <laughs> this will work because it's got the nice fancy plastic handle as a carry case until you actually get a, a real carry case for the laptop. It lasts about a month, but uh, it, it comes with ASUS 360, which is a two year warranty, uh, basically a one year international warranty. Uh, you get 24 hour phone support. Um, you get two way free standard shipping. So you, ASUS basically pays to get it from you if it needs fixing and to ship it back to you. You don't have to pay to ship it to them. The one year accidental damage protection will cover spills, surges, fires, drops. <laughs> and by fires, I think they mean like the battery catches on fire. Uh, for one year accidental damage protection, I guess. Well, no, I guess it's like house fires and stuff will be covered too. So I guess as long as you can get some kind of recovery. Accidental damage protection, I don't know. But two year standard warranty otherwise. But do register. Yeah. Neat. So this has got a, an Intel i7-6700HQ as the processor and a GTX 960M for the video. Yeah, so that processor is 2.6 gigahertz. And turbos to about 3.3 or 3.5, I believe. So this is a pretty serious notebook. I mean, it's pretty hefty too. It weighs in at six and a half, seven pounds, something like that. Yeah, it's not super portable, but with the gaming notebook, you know, what are you gonna get? It is a true quad core. It's a 45 watt TDP processor. So, I mean, it's basically a portable desktop. It's 17 inches, um, so it's got that going for it. And uh, if you wanna take a look at the uh, ports, we've got two USB three over here on the right side. We actually have, uh, we've got a Kensington lock and we have, oddly enough, uh, an optical drive. Which a what now? Yeah. A what what? I think this is from the Jurassic era. <laughs> I don't know if this is a uh, Blu-ray or not. But, but who cares really? It's an optical drive. You it's know? it's it's obsolete. I don't know. You could take it out and put another hard drive in there, I or guess. Or reduce the weight, you know? <laughs> Just break break it off. What are you gonna do with it? <laughs> I don't know. Preserve it for future generations. <laughs> uh, we've also got a uh, headphone and microphone eighth inch here. And on the other side, we've got USB Type-C, which is also Thunderbolt compatible, another USB 3, the wired Ethernet, HDMI, and DisplayPort. Nice. Everything else on this side is taken up by this giant fire-breathing vent that will <laughs> spit flames when you play games on this thing. I like that it's on the left side because I've seen gaming notebooks that vent on the right, and if you're using a mouse, like uh, this, and then yeah. it's like, wow, I'm getting hot hand from this thing. What's yeah, going yeah. on? So it's nice that they put it on the left side. That'd be good. You know, the, like the StarCraft players have little hand <laughs> they could double if you, So if you're left-handed, that might be good for you. Uh, we also have uh, speakers built in on the front here. Un not on the, uh, the screen itself, but uh, actually on the, the base here. And uh, a nice red backlit keyboard. Yeah, the keyboard is uh, it's also includes a numeric keypad, and it's yeah, interesting. it's sort of set in the middle of the device. I like the way the hinge is too, because the way that the hinge is, it sort of lowers the screen and, and sort of increases the footprint of the device a little bit. Yeah, uh, there's a pretty fairly large bezel with this screen, and it is a 1080 display, which at the you know gaming on this thing, that's the resolution you're going to be gaming at. Yeah, so 1080p. It, it's a gaming notebook. It's not going to bother with 4K. It's a 1080 gaming notebook. Yep. And uh, it is a Chai Mei um, uh, TN panel, but it has been color calibrated. So it looks pretty good as far as TN panels go, but yeah, that it means it's nice. also got a pretty good response time and, and that sort of thing for gaming. So not IPS, but better response time, not as good a color reproduction, but gaming notebook. So uh, not bad. It's pretty heavy on the storage. Oh yeah, this is, it's actually got a, a 512 gig M.2 and a two terabyte mechanical hard drive. So that's pretty serious internal storage. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you want a, a game OS drive and a media drive, I, not, you can't ask for much more than that. <laughs> and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, yeah, pretty hefty on the RAM. Now, the most surprising thing for this for me was the price. It was around $1,200 off Amazon as of the time of this video, which is around 11, 15, 2016, around November of 2016. Um, and $1,200 for 32 gigabytes of RAM, a true quad-core i7, 
and a 960M with this kind of storage, really? Wow, that seems like a good deal. It's definitely a hefty price tag, for, but it's, you know, this is definitely an enthusiast level gaming notebook for sure. You know, I mean, uh, uh, you want to be serious about it if you're going to buy this one. Yeah, for the, for the quick and dirty testing, since uh, a friend of ours is, is sort of antsy to use it, we don't have time to run a full benchmark suite on it. But we're going to take a look at Cinebench and take a look at the numbers from Cinebench. And so those are linked in the, in the article or those are on the screen. And you can see that the Cinebench numbers are right in line with the i7-6700 processor that's in there, the, the mobile version of that processor, 45 watt TDP again. Um, we've also got GTA 5 and some other games on Steam that we're sort of doing some real world testing with GTA 5 and it actually runs really well, all things considered. There's also a full dump of the Ada 64 benchmark suite. So we ran Ada 64 and if you'd like to download a copy of the Ada 64 results, that's linked on our website. You can find it in the forum at level1text.com. So be sure to check that out. The M.2 in this, in this particular machine is a 512 gig crucial unit. Um, that can read and write right around 500 megabytes per second. We verified that in an Addo benchmark and it was basically around 500 megabytes for the whole benchmark, for the whole thing, uh, pretty much across the board, which is consistent with uh, the performance that we would expect from that model. So no bottlenecking or no performance issues or, or no heat throttling or anything like that, as far as the M.2 goes. We have a limited amount of time that we can spend with this, like we said before, so battery life, we're not gonna be able to give you any kind of great idea exactly of what that's gonna be like. We just don't have the time to spend with it. It's heavy. Yeah. It's got a big battery. It has a lot of batteries. <laughs> but the amount of heat that it produces, it's gonna be dead in two hours. Yeah, yeah if you're, especially if you're gaming. <laughs> <laughs> but it's basically a portable desktop. I mean, it wouldn't actually be a, LAN, a, a bad LAN party machine either. So overall, you know, pretty good. I, I really like the Asus warranty policy. Uh, Asus seems to be improving their warranty policy with every generation and the accident coverage is something that I really enjoyed on my own UX32 VD laptop, which is, you know, an older Ivy Bridge laptop. But this is a, a modern laptop that for, you know, for the money, for what you get, seems like a good deal. Not bad, not bad. Comfortable to use. Keys are a little small with that numeric keypad, but you know, some people are gonna want that for a certain kind of gaming. How's the travel distance? It's pretty good. I mean, you got plenty of room for your wrists here. Uh, it's a little, you know, you're definitely gonna be putting your wrists, your wrists themselves on a sharp edge. <laughs> That's maybe not ideal, maybe, but, and uh, you know, your, your mouse pad down here is gonna block any kind of wrist support. But uh, the keys themselves, it's pretty comfortable to type on. You know, it's not a mechanical keyboard, but uh, it feels okay. Neat. And the power button is built right into the uh, into the keyboard, so it's easy to look over if you're not yeah, paying attention. Yeah, it takes just a few minutes to find it. Just like you know, you're rubbing the, the sides of it, giving it a little massage. It's What's going right on? here on the right here on the keyboard. And the indicator LEDs are along the front for uh, sleep and power and hard drive and caps lock and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. airplane mode and a lock LED. Comes with Windows 10. It is, of course, not a touch screen at all. So. No. Um, bear that in mind as well. No touch screen here. Overall, not too bad though. If you're looking for 10, if 1080 resolution doesn't bother you, you powerful gaming laptop and you're willing to spend $1,200, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no to this. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't seem like a bad deal. If you pick one up, let us know what your experiences are because honestly with a laptop, you really know if it's a good laptop or not after you've had it for about three months. Yeah. After about three months, it's like, oh yeah, this was good. Or oh, this was really bad. And I was super, super happy, still am, with my ancient UX32VD. So it's nice to see, and this is the first uh, Asus notebook that I've taken a look at pretty much since then. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if you guys have picked one of these up, what your experiences have been. Let us know if you've had warranty issues or if everything has gone well, let us know either way. We should also, I don't know if we mentioned uh, the Thunderbolt support. It, external graphics card is an option. Yeah, this. yeah, because you got the Thunderbolt port, you can totally run any external PCI Express peripheral. Uh, Asus makes a Thunderbolt dock, in fact, so as long as it's fully, you know, fully compatible, that should work. I don't have one to test. I'd love to get my hands on a Thunderbolt dock, but don't have one yet. Maybe soon, maybe if things hold out and sell some ads, I don't know. <laughs> Pick up, buy more hardware, I don't know. Oh, sir, it's my t-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, we have some t-shirts for sale. They're not, they're not bad. Um, all right. Well, 
let us know if you guys are thinking about getting one of these. Talk to the forum members, you know, more than just us. It's all about the community. So the people that pick these up or the people that are thinking about picking these up, come, come to the forum and let's have a chat. All right, so the question from everybody is gonna become, uh, what about Linux on this thing? How does Linux work in this thing? Well, I did have a chance to try Fedora 25 on this. Uh, Fedora 25 actually works out really well. Everything worked out of the box. Keyboard, backlight, brightness control, um, everything. The only thing that didn't work that I uh, immediately found was the um, backlight control for the screen on the keyboard. You can still do it through the UI. You just click on the UI and control the brightness that way. But Wi-Fi worked, Bluetooth worked, the USB card reader worked. Everything pretty much out of the box worked on Linux, which is really, you know, it makes a pretty nice Linux workstation overall um, when, we're, when we're talking about what this thing is able to do on Linux, you know, quad core, 2.6, turbo, the whole nine yards. Uh, the battery life left a little bit to be desired. Um, just farting around at maximum screen brightness, the, the battery was dead in about an hour and 15 minutes, not even gaming or doing anything like that. But, I mean, what are you gonna do? It's a desktop replacement, so. It takes about an hour and a half to charge the battery, uh, which isn't too bad uh, from, from very nearly dead. I was uh, <laughs> pleasantly surprised that even the uh, built-in webcam worked perfectly out of the box with Fedora 25. Now, one final thing to note about this system is that it is a dual GPU system, which means that you've got both the Intel integrated 530 graphics, I think, that comes with the CPU, as well as the NVIDIA 620M. You can use both GPUs in Linux. It's a little bit of a pain. The very bleedingest edge version of GNOME at the time of this video supports uh, right-clicking a program and running it with a specific GPU, which is kind of similar to Optimus in Windows, if you're used to that. So you can use both CPUs in Linux. You just might have to jump through a couple hoops. You uh, may be able to disable the Intel integrated graphics. I checked the UEFI to see if it had a disable onboard graphics option because that would be really handy so that you can use it with Linux. I mean, it's not as power friendly, but you don't have as many hoops to jump through. Uh, it did not have that, that option, but it's not really a showstopper. You just need to fiddle with things. Same with the backlight control, the backlight brightness on the keyboard. You've still got control through the software, and if you want to hook up the keyboard buttons again, it's just a matter of setting a script and binding it to those brightness keyboards. I had to do that even on my UX32VD. Not really a big deal overall.